Good night all, hope you're all well, hope you had a great week and welcome to this educational video about SMT Divergence. Again, SMT Divergence is a major concept that needs to be considered when trading from an institutional perspective, etc. But there's so many different ways I like to use SMT, uh, which I'm going to cover in this video, that helps me elaborate on profitable trades and higher probable setups. And it also saves me from low probable market conditions and the low probable setups, which I will cover in depthly in this video. So without further ado, let's look at the introduction on this slide here. Um, or more specifically, exactly what SMT is. And then I'll explain SMT in live market environments as this week we've seen a lot of different SMT divergence present alongside the biases given. Um, and that being gold, that being EURUSD, and that being EURAED, those are the main, the main currency pairs I'm going to cover. Again, these were previously covered in the previous market outlooks. The bias was given, but what I'm going to do is show you how not only did price move in our favoured bias, but why it moved in that favoured bias at such an aggressive manner. Um, and also factor in things like N uh, NFP and how NFP is actually a um low probable day again a lot of traders who are experienced in the field stay out of nfp completely this is not just because it's a higher volatile day or um sometimes the market conditions can move both directions and create a seek and destroy profile it's also because from an smt divergence perspective there's often a divergence in both ways so it's very hard to pick a directional bias when there's SMT on both sides of the market. Normally, price is diverging one side of the market, and that basically is in line with the overall institutional order flow. If we're looking for a continuation setup, we're going to see if we're going to if we're looking for a bullish continuation setup, we're going to see SMT happen from a bullish perspective. However, if we're looking at it from a re reversal standpoint, as in the reversal is going to be a bullish trend, we'll be looking for. Um, bullish SMT signs to form at specific areas of interest, etc., which I'll elaborate on in just a second. But as those specific areas of interest come to fruition, what we want to see is on a higher time frame, those specific um, areas of interest that ideally be liquidity pools, not really an area of mit mitigation as such, but more so um, a certain level of liquidity has been taken. And then we see um, that SMT divergence and then progressively see breaks of market structure, return to order box, return to breakers, and then look to refine further and take our entries. But yeah, with that being said, let's actually look at this portion of trading view here. So exactly what is SMT? An inverse correlation of correlated assets. So basically it's any asset um, that have the same denominator with one another so again if i'm using euro dollar i can use euro jpy i can use euro, euro usd i can even use um ad usd i can use um ad jpy etc as long as they have the base in common with one another or currency pair co common in one another snt is valid um sometimes you have to play play around with it so for example if you're trading a dollar pair you'll have to compare it to obviously let's say we're using euro usd you'll have to compare uh, euro usd with gbp usd you can compare euro usd uh, with uh, euro jpy you can also compare euro usd with um the dollar index uh, and controversially if we're using a pair like usd cad again you can compare that with the do dollar index to see if price is which i'm going to talk about in just a second making higher highs one making higher low etc and there's that divergence in price you can also compare usd cad with oil as they normally move in sync with one another um, or inverse rather so you can also find a divergence in that um, but it's just anything that moves in sync slash opposite to one another um, you can often find a cracking correlation which we call an smt divergence so exactly what um what does an smt divergence mean before i explain the backbone of how to use it etc and um, the framework of it what does SMT actually suggest? So by showing SMT illustrates exactly where smart money are net long and net short on several positions or on the overall position rather. So again, let's look at this as um, your USD. 
Just keep it nice and simple. So we've got Euro dollar here. And we've got two of USD here. Again, this could be the actually not actually use that as DXY because GBP USD moves in sync with EU and the dollar moves opposite to EU. So this is a better example. But nevertheless, if we say this is Euro USD's chart, what we, what we have here is a stop hunt of this previous engineered swing high here. Now upon this stop hunt come to fruition. Happen there. We have two major things that's two major things that's happening within this stop hunt here. This stop hunt, I'm just gonna make this a bit bigger so you can see the text. The stop hunt is firstly attracting retail breakout artists. So again, people who look at this as sort of support and resistance uh, methodology, etc. They're buying up on the breakout. And this may even come from an intraday perspective, like this could be the Asian high and Asian low. We see a total soup scenario from the Asia high. Attract retail to long this, thinking the low of the day has been made during the Asia low. And we see an aggressive move lower. And this is often known, this total soup here is often known as a stop hunt scenario. The second um, form of liquidation is in the form of buy stops from previous liquidity pools slash engineer swing high. So again, this is the engineer swing high here, just above the engineer swing high here. All of this area here is full of buy stops. And again, as I mentioned previous, previously countless amount of times, buy stops are present above engineered swing highs and equal highs. So it comes basically in a form like this. Stops are present like this, um, and the position looks something, something like this, something um, similar to this. And upon these orders being activated, again, these are buy stops, meaning as soon as price trades above the entrance from high, this order is activated. We then see an aggressive sell off and stop losses are triggered and retail are stopped out of their position in an aggressive manner. And normally we see this sell off um, happen impulsively and often fair value gaps form slash follow. And the reason being is because it, it's a, it doesn't allow, sorry, retail to exit their position sorry about that so as we see the sell-off it illustrates that um big banks are behind the move but the catalyst towards this ultimate sell-off and the stop hunt etc is this smt over here. so what we're actually looking for in the form of this smt is simply divergence in price if euro usd is making a higher high we want to see dollar index fail to make that new lower low. Now upon that failing to make a new lower low, that shows a high probable market condition that the dollar index is now mitigated with something in here. This could be an order block, this could be a breaker, etc. And this shows that EURUSD is liquidated, these buy stops, etc. And um, stop losses have been activated. And if we saw an aggressive move lower, it obviously shows that that's backed by the banks and we're most likely going to see a continuation lower into further prices slash draw on liquidity on a higher time frame, etc. So yeah, this can be used on all time frames, the higher time frames, um, intraday time frames, and even the one minute time frames. Looking for short term scalps. You could actually be looking at something like this on the one minute time frame as a possible market maker buy model. Looking at this original consolidation. This right here frames a smart money reversal. I love it when I see SMT and the smart money reversal. It gives me so much more confidence to not only hold my position, but look for continuations within the reaccumulation and then ultimately liquidates the original consolidation over here. So yeah, that's a um, introduction on how to use SMT and exactly what it is. Now let's look at some examples on exactly how I use SMT and why I use it in the way I do. So yeah, we're going to be focusing on Euro AD 
for this example. The reason I want to focus on Euro AD is because this bias over here was given on the market outlook. In fact, the original market outlook, I did give this bias here. Instead, I wanted to see price trade into this bullish order block here, this last two down candles. Prior to that, I move and upon price trading into that bullish order block, I want to see higher pricing. Um, and basically, the market outlook after that, I had this take profit mapped out thing here, the risk to reward uh, ratio for a long position. And we literally hit take profit to the absolute pip. And then it looks like now price is reversing. But unfortunately, it didn't come to my area of interest that I was looking at in the later portion of the week, which was a liquidation of, I'll remove this for a second now, the second point of the trend line and into this fair value gap here. So that would have been the favorable scenario. But looking back at this, I understand where this bullishness, the catalyst towards this bullishness came from. Um, but before I talk about that, I'm just going to zoom out a bit. So again, we were in this market maker buy model. You can't just frame, well, to a certain extent you can. You can't just frame SMT when there, when there hasn't been a higher time frame uh, reference point back or you know, you're looking at a time frame that hasn't really got much price action to it. And what I mean by that is you can't go into the 30 minute time frame and expect longs because you see a short term SMT, etc. No, you've got to understand the overall framework on that currency pair. So again, on this currency pair, Euro AD, we had the original consolidation here, we had the small money reversal. And I stated in the market outlook, this is our low risk buy and we are ideally in that reaccumulation phase over here. So I knew the framework on the four hour time frame was a market maker buy model. So I'm only looking for bullish trades on Euro USD. There's no point shorting this. Even though there was a short opportunity present in here, we were looking just for lower pricing as we had that four hour or breaker, etc. into this fair value gap and then we were looking for longs. Nevertheless, this small new, small new reversal formed and what did we what did we have straight after that small one reversal formed again if you look at if you compare uh, euro ad to ad usd you can see there is an SMT divergence here. Why is there an SMT divergence here? AUDUSD normally does the complete opposite Euro, Euro AD does. So again, we have bearishness over here, bullishness over here. We have short term bullishness over here, short term bearishness over here. Again, we had that uh, bullishness over here. We have that bearishness on Euro AD. So again, you can see it does the complete opposite. So normally in this example, what we would, what price action would normally do is if we have a lower low on Euro AD, we normally want to see a higher high on ADUSD, but notice there was a cracking correlation. This is what we call SMT. So again, there's an SMT divergence between Euro AD and ADUSD. This is a very high confluence towards taking a long slash short, depending on your favored bias. Our favored bias, if we're looking at this situation, is bullish. Then we trade into this last down candle prior to the up move. So what is this ideally done? If I look at this in the grand scheme of things, We've built up buy side liquidity over here in the form of equal highs. We've liquidated this engine at swing low here in the form of SMT. And we've mitigated with this last down candle prior to the up move in the form of a bullish order block. So again, there's a three very strong confluences. And that right there, you can see we went straight into profit. And as we traded into profit, what did we form? This inefficient pricing here. As I mentioned in the uh, previous example to do with SMT, this is what you tend to see, and this is how you know the banks have backed this move. This is how you know banks have entered long positions in this move here. And not only that, we've liquidated this strong liquidity, which is the equal highs, and also mitigated with our Pacific target at the time, which was the breaker. So, yeah, that was um, a clean trade to do with SMT. Then we see price trade back into this region here. And again, we swept this engine this swing low here. And traded through this bu uh, bullish order block here. So again, the last down candle prior to the up move, which frames a bullish order block. Um, and often when you trade through a bullish order block, from a short term perspective, it could also suggest SMT is um, on the cards too. So again, if we look at this area here, 
from this low here, sorry, this high here to this high here. Notice price failed to make a higher high, but over here we successfully made a new lower low. So that shows that cracking correlation that shows that SMT divergence. And then um, we saw higher pricing, etc. And then this was our reaccumulation phase in here. Um, but yeah, if we just zoom out in this reaccumulation phase in here, right? What do we see over here? We see a trend line phantom. We see 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Now, as price traded back to create that 0 0.4, what do we ideally do? By this fake out of this trend line phantom over here. What do we know about fake outs? This is a manipulation phase. This is to a, look at the candle closure on these two candles here. These two candles being Marabozu candles. This is aggressive bearish candles to attract retail, to attract the majority to go short via breakout ISTs. So attracting the breakout eyes to go short. Upon them going short, what's happening? A lot of stop losses above this engine is high here, above this engine is high here. Upon price trading higher, what also happens? Inefficient pricing in here, inefficient pricing here. So you know the banks have backed this move. So also, it's not just you see inefficient pricing and you buy. No, you ideally want to be a participant within the move before this inefficient pricing here. When you see these inefficient pricings happen, especially on the four-hour time frame, it's a confidence booster to hold that position to the initial target. So again, I should have been on the ball and saw this trade. Let's just see time on price. So again, this was during the Asian session, so I wouldn't have saw, uh, capitalized on that. Yeah, this is in the New York slash London. London and New York. So this would have been a nice trade to be a participant in. But yeah, if we saw a four hour fake out um, of the trend line, etc., liquidity has been gained. Now we want to now we what we want to see was is banks a participant within this trade on an intraday time frame? Again, time and price is fractal as in, sorry, time uh, with the strategy is fractal, as in it works on all time frames. So if we get onto the 15 minute time frame, so it's five minute time frame, as you can see an SMT on the five minute time frame as well. We actually look at this fake out on the, um, uh, we actually look in depthly on the four hour fake out of the trend line. We actually measure up this engine is swing low here to this engine is swing low here. Notice how price created a higher, high, higher low over here. And notice how price created a higher, high over here. So again, it's done the opposite of what we expect. And again, AD, USD moves opposite to um, Euro AD, where we expect higher pricing on Euro AD. We expect lower pricing on AD USD. But notice we see that divergence in price. This is how we capitalize on reversals, right? Literally, uh, and the risk reward on these you can capitalize on are crazy. If we look at this as our Pacific entry, this being the bullish order block, and you see the SMT form, etc. You know, could be looking at something like that, and then obviously swinging for. Um, our initial target, which is a clear liquidation of our market book of buy model, and that in itself is a 20% gain. So, yeah, once you refine these on the um, intraday time frames, the risk rewards are crazy. But let's just say you miss this opportunity here because this is a four hour trend line fake out. There's going to be several opportunities to get in sync with the move. So then we see price constantly making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. Or maybe you just want to wait a, a bit for price to sort of show its hand a bit. I like to do that as well, as in let, let price show its bullishness, its bullish stance. High, 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 low, looking at structure, monitoring it. It all looks good. And then we look at price over here. So again, this is going into the London session over here. We say another set of 
or another form of SMT divergence. Again, look at this high, it's this high here. Notice over here, we created a high high, and over here, this line here, price failed to create that lower low. That is a another form of SMT. What's going on inside this S SMT divergence here? Look at these last two down candles, price layout move that broke the structural high. This acts as our bullish order block. So we're over here, we had a sweep of this buy side liquidity here, a clean stop hunt, etc. Over here, we had an area of mitigation. And this risk reward would have been crazy. Entry there. Stop there. And again, you'll be swinging. For the overall market maker buy model to be completed, I'm looking at another 15% there. So just on the cards there, again, this is sort of talking from hindsight and whatnot, but I did call the bullish fra framework, the bullish move. But this could have been a 20% move, this could have been re-entry for a 15% move. But again, you're looking at a 35% gain within a weekly perspective on one currency pair. You can see how powerful um, this SMT divergence can be. So yeah, that's uh, Euro AD, some examples on SMT on that. One I want to talk about and the framework played out to the absolute T. I actually want you to rewind, um, I believe it's 2153. I talk about my bias on gold in the daily time frame. If you just go back and listen to what I said, I said on the daily time frame, I want to see some sort of SMT form. Um, and what I basically meant by that was taking out this engine this swing guy here and for gold to trade into this breaker here as we hadn't traded inside this breaker at that current time but on silver we had. And I was basically stating that the SMT divergence should look something like this. And on the day when I gave the call during the London session, had this mapped out as well. Gold should not take out, gold should take out this high, um, but on silver, uh, this high should be pro protected. And the reason I stated that was because of this SMT divergence I wanted to form. Again, I wanted to see silver fail to make a higher high, which it did. We failed to make that higher high, and we saw that divergence with gold. As gold made that higher high, that aggressive um, high, that aggressive run higher. The reason this higher high was formed was to mitigate with this bearish break over here. Um, this last down candle prior to the up move. Whereas silver had already mitigated with its specific break, etc. So I thought the uh, bearish bias was going to form. We were ultimately going to create a new lower low on silver, which it played out to the absolute T. As we did create a new lower low on silver. I wanted to see some sort of form of SMT divergence, which we did see on silver over here. And gold, we saw that aggressive bearishness come to fruition. Um, on NFP, again, I'm not a big fan of trading NFP days. Uh, as mentioned previously, a lot of professional traders avoid that day completely. As you know, if you're talking about 12 NFP days in the whole year, say about a good six or seven and eight of them are low probable and majority of them eight low probable nfp days will be losing days there's no point you gambling on a day like this but it's in my opinion it's all rigged anyways as in it's, the algo is still running and reaching for certain pdras that's institutional re reference points that it's gonna sell off from or it's going to add new long positions from etc. If I actually just put on that 15 minute time frame bias, I stated this exact level here. So I said from an intraday perspective, I want to see price trade into this one hour order block. Actually, listen to the video again. I will reiterate the exact video I'm talking about and the link. I want to see price trade into this one hour order block and sell off and ultimately create a, a market milk sell model which we did. So I basically drew out the framework before it was the framework. But yeah, I'll reevaluate this going into the market. Oh look, we have a low resistance so liquidity run here. Of this engine this swing low here. Uh, but personally with this breaking market structure over here, and obviously this being the four hour uh, breaker, 
We've retested it now. So gold's in an interesting area. Again, we're, we're trapped in a bearish breaker. And if we are a bullish breaker, both being high side for PDRAs. So it'd be interesting where gold wants to go next. But yeah, that was a framework. And that's how I basically use SMT to frame not only this bullish bias over here, but this bearish bias here, which we could have capitalized on. And again, the risk reward on this would have been crazy. Entry over here and stops would have been just above that. Which sure about there. And then obviously, I'll be looking for a lot of price in there. So again, that would have been a nice 8% card uh, trade on the on the cards, including partials. You're looking at 6%, 6.5%. So yeah, that would have been a great trade. And last but not least, uh, EURUSD is going to show you some examples on how I use SMT with EURUSD coupled with GBPUSD. So again, it's going to be a pair that moves in sync um, with the correlated asset. But before I get into um, the examples on SMT, etc., I want to talk about how I defer taking a low probable setup, etc. So again, this was the bias I gave on the market outlook. I said I wanted to see price give us a bearish reaction from this four hour fair value gap. Now, the only way I was going to take an entry of this four, four hour fair value gap, and arguably this breaker here, was if you listen to the words I said, I said I want to see it form in the form of SMT. So again, if it doesn't form via SMT, um, then I'm not really looking to take the trade. And the reason I said that was because arguably we were counted bias trading this pair. Yes, price is in a bearish trend. I see that as in we're constantly making lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. But the intraday institutional order flow is bullish as we're constantly making high highs, higher lows, high highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. Um, so yeah, we would have been ideally catching the smart money reversal the top of the trend. And this is why I said the SMT is important because upon you trading smart money reversals, nine times out of 10, it does come in the form of an SMT. So yeah, in regards to you picking the tops and bottoms of a trend, you want to see SMT happen. If there's no SMT um, basically present, then you don't take the trade. You don't pull the trigger. Hence why I just left this to do what it basically wanted to do. We saw higher pricing. Um, and then we actually saw an SMT over here, which could actually be an participant in. Then it's like, there's no point in you taking trades on a Friday after NFP going into market close, which is very low probable. So we'll reevaluate re this. Um, Possibly tomorrow, I'll try and get the market outlook out Sunday. Um, but I'll reevaluate this tomorrow with analysis, etc. But yeah, now this SMT is formed over here. I'll just show you in just a second. We've got a lot of inefficient pricing here to fill, and lots of inefficient pricing over here to fill. So again, we could actually be in for a deep retracement. A lot of liquidity to fill over here, liquidity, etc. But ultimately, I see this original consolidation getting taken out. Um, at some point, looking at some four hour time frame, yeah, we just come to this order block over here as well. One, one thing I don't like is these equal highs, so yeah, be interesting time for your USD. But to nevertheless, going back onto the lesson on um SMT divergence, and yeah, why was um NFP also very low probable? Why is it a low probable day to trade? Again, as mentioned previously, sometimes we can see a divergence on both sides. This sort of confuses a trader um, in regards to actually sticking with the bias. So over here, you see uh, EURUSD making a higher high. What happened on GBPUSD? We failed to make that higher high, which is a sign of SMT. If this was a perfectly correlated market, we would see EURUSD, make that higher high, and then ultimately sell off with something like this. But then if you look on the flip side over here, focus on this engine this swing low here. Notice how that say perfectly intact. We saw a 170 pip rally from that engine this swing low there. But notice what happened on GU's engine this swing low here. That a stop hunt of the engineering swing right there. 
So again, from this engineer string load to this engineer string load here, that's a form SMT divergence. So notice when I said it can confuse the trader in the sense that which directional bias do I pick when there's the divergence on both sides? But this is why I stay away from trading NFP days as well, as in both sides of the market are now manipulated. So it's just a matter of by sort of showing his hand and it will be able to capitalize on a specific bias affording them. Right now, price is trapped. And yes, there are both sellers and buyers present on the EURUSD market and GBPUSD market. So we have a stop hunt there. And it looks like we're coming towards that mitigation or possibly a rebalance of that inefficient pricing. Let's get into more examples. And let's look at this from a continuation um, standpoint. We'll focus on what was the catalyst towards this bearishness over here. So looking at GBPUSD over here and EURUSD. Notice on EURUSD, we created that higher high and GPUSD, we failed to create that higher high, which is a form of SMT again, that cracking correlation. Now we broke uh, several levels of structure, lower low over here, these equal lows over here, liquidity has been gained. A small push back up to where this bearish order block over here. Then we have that breaking mark structure again, a rebalance with this break over here. So that seeing that sell off, arguably price just coming back to that breaker there. And I saw that aggressive sell off. And now we can start zooming out and looking at this as a possible market maker sell model with this being our draw liquidity um, slash original consolidation. So how are we going to look for possible setups um, or continuation pat patterns for from the highest probable standpoint? We're going to look for our SMT. So again, if you look at this, Again, this is not supply and demand, guys. So you can cut through candles to find um, the best possible setup, etc. We're taking yours. This one here. Yeah. We're taking um, this engine to swing high here. Draw it out in time. So notice. See yours. Maybe you can use this bit here. So notice on GBPUSD, we created that high high. On NeuroUSD, we failed to create that high high. Again, this is a form of SMT divergence. This could have been the perfect opportunity to go short at this bearish order block up here. Trade into it once, sold off, broke the structural low here. Trade into it twice, also coming to the optimal trade entry region. Then ultimately, sold off aggressively um again price sold off but the structural low here price sold off but the structural low there do we see over here again this one's a bit of a confusing one but it does work as well what we see in price over here is price is just stale before the relative equal price but notice over here on GeoUSD, we failed to create that high, which basically suggests that there was an area of mitigation done, or in this case, price rebalance with the Pacific fair value gap, etc. I think we just we just touched the low of that order above there, but yeah, in this area, mitigation was done. In this area, just buy side liquidity was formed. But that's still a cracking correlation, and that is a form of SMT. And then again, trading lower from a reversal standpoint. If you actually knew what this level was from a high time frame perspective, um, and it's specific liquidation zone, etc., could be looking for SMT in here. I'll give you a second to see if you can spot it. So again, the SMT is over here. That's our price creates that lower low on euro dollar, but we failed to create that lower low on GU. Leading to that cracking correlation and that SMT forming. So 
so yeah with that being said guys that's going to wrap up the lesson on smt um smt divergence as a whole hope you enjoyed that lesson i hope you found it insightful if you do have any questions at all on smt do drop me a message and um, i'll try and explain those parts you'll find them difficult a bit more in depth slash further um and yeah with that being said i'm going to end the end the video here i'm going to try and get this week's market outlook out on sunday as i know a lot of you saying that on a monday night it's sort of difficult to watch the market outlook and then obviously tuesday comes to fruition and we're sort of looking then for the highest slash low of the week so it's sort of like a rapid process etc um and sunday would obviously be a better day to digest the information on the currency pairs i'm looking at and yeah basically make your own notes accordingly so i do understand that and i will try and get out uh, as early as i can on sunday you just have to bear with me a bit on this week especially because nfp has just passed us there's not much price action i have to work with um, especially after we've seen like 170 pip 200 pip rally on euro dollar on the dollar index etc um, so this week may actually be an exception uh, going into monday so i want to see a little bit more price action develop before i give up my biases but yeah when i do give up my biases i'm ensure that the most accurate bias as possible and the most insightful ones so yeah let's start incorporating smt a little bit more in our setups now and um yeah continue hunting for those sniper entries once again thank you very much for watching thank you very much for being a part of quantum i'll speak to you next time on the market outlook good luck and good trading